Striving to do good or evil rests in our bones, but sometimes in the end, karma has a habit of catching up with us. It's one thing to show bravery and strength in the face of war, but it's something entirely different to tempt fate, especially when you and your men are surrounded. General John Sedgwick was leading a troop of men in the Battle of Spotsylvania Court House during the American Civil War. Confederate snipers were surrounding the area, occasionally shooting at Sedgwick's men. As the sniper sent bullets flying at the soldiers below, they would dodge them as quickly as possible. Every time this occurred, General Sedgwick would laugh with arrogance. After one of the men stood up to Sedgwick, telling him that he could have died if he had not dodged the bullet, Sedgwick proclaimed, What? Men dodging this way for single bullets? What will you do when they open fire along the whole line? I am ashamed of you. They couldn't hit an elephant at this distance. The snipers took aim at the Union troops once again, and the soldiers jumped out of the way once again. Sedgwick thought what he had said before was so clever that he decided to repeat it again. He yelled, I'm ashamed of you, dodging that way. They couldn't hit an elephant. General John Sedgwick was unable to finish his sentence, as a sniper had shot him directly under his left eye, killing him instantly. There's nationalism, and then there's extreme nationalism. There's justice, and then there's karma. And sometimes karma is, thankfully, more eye-opening in positive ways than negative ones. Roughly one-fifth of Hungarians have been shown to hold anti-Semitic views, believing that Jewish people ruin their country. In addition, there are many Hungarian anti-Semites who are also Holocaust deniers. It isn't surprising that these citizens started their own political party called Jobbik, which has grown to be the third largest party in the National Assembly. Chaunad Segdi was a leader of the Jobbik party and was known throughout Hungary for his radical anti-Semitism. Any opportunity he had, Segdi would make his intolerant stance known to his fellow Hungarians. But one day, after speaking to his grandmother, Segdi found out that not only did the Holocaust actually happen, but his grandmother was a survivor of Auschwitz. Moreover, his grandfather had survived forced labor camps. The irony hit him with a crushing weight and changed his life substantially. And soon after the eye-opening experience, Segdi recanted all of his anti-Semitic statements and backed out of the Jobbik party entirely. Today, Segdi embraces his Jewish heritage, has been baptized as an Orthodox Jew, and even visited Auschwitz. Ice hockey is undoubtedly one of the most dangerous sports, and although players are covered in protective padding, they can still receive critical injuries. However, it is all the more painful when fans add insult. To injury. Steve Sullivan was a hockey player for the Chicago Blackhawks. He had already been knocked around during the entire game against the Colorado Avalanches, but wasn't prepared to be whacked in the face by an opposing hockey stick. The high stick hit him on the bridge of his nose, causing some serious bleeding. He additionally received 12 stitches post-game. As Sullivan skated over to the bench, he was abruptly stopped by a hysterical fan on the other side of the glass, who was laughing and heckling him about his injury. Sullivan paused to listen, and they both exchanged some strong words, but the fan's insults were relentless. Sullivan headed to bench, got a quick patch up, and went back on the ice to finish the game. After scoring two goals on the Avalanche's goalie, one player slap shot the next puck away from the net, and everyone watched as it sailed through the air, over the glass, and right into the forehead of the fan who had just jeered Sullivan. 
Seizing the opportunity, Sullivan skated over to the heckler and proceeded to give him the same treatment that he had received earlier. It was a simple justice that made Steve Sullivan's night, and the fan ended up receiving a few more stitches than Sullivan did. We come across signs in our lives that we should heed, both metaphorical and literal. Sometimes these signs are there to save us a little bit of grief or even our very own lives. Tyler Myers decided to join the game of stealing stop signs around his hometown of Norwalk, Ohio. He intended to sell these stolen stop signs and also keep some for himself and had no concern for the possible dangers that removing these signs would pose to others. He just wanted to do what he wanted to do. But Tyler would later have to deal with the consequences of disregarding the importance of these stop signs. Driving down Medusa Road in his red F-150 pickup, Tyler breezed through a stop sign and was immediately struck by a semi-truck. The two vehicles were slammed together and flew off the road, coming to rest in a vacant field. The driver of the tractor trailer was medevaced to a hospital in Toledo with serious but non-life-threatening injuries. However, Tyler was not wearing a seatbelt and was killed as a result of the crash, taking the burden on for everyone else that he had put in jeopardy by stealing the stop signs. Brenda Sue Schaefer had gotten herself into a relationship with a man named Mel Ignatow. But after reluctantly accepting his proposal, Mel's true personality began to show. Starting out as a kind and affectionate boyfriend, he gradually turned into an abusive monster leading up to their engagement. Mel would demand sex from Brenda, constantly complaining that she never fulfilled his every sexual need. Brenda, with encouragement from her family, was planning to leave Mel, but Mel knew what she was planning. So he started making strategies of his own with his ex-girlfriend. He convinced Brenda to stop by a friend's house, but as soon as she walked in the door, she was sedated with chloroform and tied to a glass table. For the next few hours, she would be torturously assaulted. While this occurred, Mel's ex-girlfriend, Mary Ann Shore, took photographs and occasionally participated. After the merciless torment, Mel suffocated Brenda and neatly packed her body away in an old suitcase, which was later buried in the woods. Mel and Mary Ann would later go on trial, however Mel would walk free, until the photographs were later discovered. Unfortunately, he was never able to be tried for the murder a second time due to the laws of double jeopardy, and he therefore walked free again. But karma wouldn't let him get away with the torture and murder of Brenda Sue Schaefer that easily. In 2008, Mel Ignatow tripped and fell as he was walking past his glass table and cut himself severely on a broken shard. He remained alive for some time as he bled out. Panicked, he stumbled around his home before eventually collapsing near his bedroom. Mel was found dead in that spot. In a twist of fate, it happened to be the same glass table that Mel had tied Brenda to before she was brutally murdered. Special thanks to Blue Apron for sponsoring this episode. Blue Apron has teamed up with me to bring you a really great offer. If you go to the link in the description below, the first 100 people to sign up will get three free meals in their first Blue Apron order. Blue Apron is a meal delivery service that allows you to cook delicious, chef-designed meals from the comfort of your own kitchen by sending you all the ingredients and recipes you need to create culinary masterpieces. Everything is delivered in perfect portions in a refrigerated box to keep everything fresh, and one of the best parts about Blue Apron is that they get their food from quality local suppliers, and they have so much diversity that everyone is sure to love their options. Every meal Blue Apron sends can be prepared in 40 minutes or less and not only expands your palate, but teaches you how to become a better cook so you don't keep eating the same boring foods over and over again. 
So again, be sure to check out the link in the description below because the first 100 people to sign up get three free meals with their first order from Blue Apron. I've been a loyal customer of Blue Apron for years, so trust me when I say that you won't be disappointed. Thank you for listening. And that's all for now. If you'd like to watch another video of mine, please press on screen. And of course, if you haven't yet, please subscribe to my channel now because you won't want to miss what's next. And I'll see you next time.